I had to start this entire video because I got a phone call. But anyway, <clears throat> the last five months, I, I've i really been learning some hard lessons. Like God has really, God has really been moving in my life. He has really been teaching me some things. He's been, I can't even ex explain the extent of what God's been doing inside of me. But um, that's why I've been talking about the stuff that I've been talking about, which is, you know, praying effectively, being able to hear God's voice and just encouraging you guys to trust God's will for your life and to pray for God's will for your life. Because I would say in the last three months, <clears throat> the last three months has really been um, really something for me. I've really, um, God has really been, you know, uprooting some stuff in my life. And if we know God, he's a paradox. So I hate the process in which God is renewing my thinking and changing some things in me, changing some things in me. But I love the results. I have gained and am gaining wisdom. I am obtaining favor. I am gaining revelation. I am gaining understanding and you know even though the process when I tell you it hurt my God it feels like I'm being emotionally and mentally nailed to a cross but um, the results are definitely worth it I mean the way that I'm learning to understand God on the frequency that I'm on. I mean, I mean, you know, the frequency that I'm understanding Him on the way that I'm hearing. I mean, I'm getting revelation on the frequency that I'm getting it. It's all worth it. It is. It's worth it. But in these last couple months, I just started to realize that. A lot of things that I believe were right, some of them were just like half baked truth. They was half right. Some of the things I believe were just wrong. I know a lot of people they don't like to admit that they're wrong. I don't care about that. I was wrong with a lot of stuff, and I was wrong with the way that I went about things. Um, I myself had to go back and relearn how to pray. Effectively, like I said, within the last five months, I've been learning a lot. I've been really experiencing a paradigm shift. Um, <clears throat> I've been really learning how to pray for God's will in my life because we say we pray for God's will, but really, we just want what we want, whether we want. Our marriages to work, whether we want the house or we want the cars, you know. And there's nothing wrong with wanting your marriage or wanting to be married or wanting the house and the car. There's nothing wrong with those things. But when you are only seeking God for those things, then that's where the problem comes in because the word says in Matthew 6, was it 633? But seek ye first, but it's the condition. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added. That means everything else that you need will be added. And even some of the things that you desire will be added as a reward. But you got to seek the kingdom first. And I had to learn to really seek the kingdom. I had to learn to really ask the Holy Spirit to help me have, get the, have the trust, help me to, Trust God so I can have the peace of God. <clears throat> because in the short that I did the other day, I gave the revelation of peace. And I said that peace is the key material in building the highway in which the communication with God moves. In which the vehicle, the communication of God moves. So peace is how you hear God. Peace is how you get the answered prayers. Peace it's how you obtain God's favor. Peace is how you get the instructions. Peace. Because when your mind is all over the place, you are anxious. 
That means you're trying to control your situation. Whatever storm you find yourself in, you're trying to control it. And when you are trying to control the storm, you are hindering what God is doing in your life. Because if you are in it, God allowed it to happen. He allowed it for a reason. So you have to relinquish control. And that's the Holy Spirit to help you to remove your hands. Because you're not going to do anything but hinder and delay the process. God knows what's best for you. You don't. We just know what feels good and what hurts. And we don't want to deal with stuff that hurts. We want everything to feel good, especially with, you know, these days and times. We want everything to make us feel good, make us happy. Do what makes you happy. Be happy. Be happy. Now, you need to be holy and be healthy. That's what we need. So, I just kind of want to get ahead and share my, my testimony. I want to encourage you guys to really pray for God's will in your life. You know, I used to actually be afraid to pray that prayer because when we pray for God's will, we don't know what's coming down the line. We don't know what's coming down the belt. We don't know what's coming to hit us. But <clears throat> the word says that, what do you say? Let me paraphrase. You dwell in the secret place, you shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So if you are in this will, you are under the shadow of God's protection and direction. So whatever situation you find yourself in, it may hurt, but it's not going to cause you to perish. It's going to kill you because you need to be killed. You need whatever that's inside of you that rebels against God, rebels against whatever he's trying to do, rebels and, and cause not to be obedient. Yeah, it needs to die in you. So God will allow something to kill you. And you have to allow yourself to be killed. But you won't perish. Meaning God won't actually cause harm to you. As in harm as casting you by the wayside. And not rebuilding you. Shaping you and molding you. To be the vessel to fit in his purpose. So, it just started raining. It was getting dark. I'm sorry for the, the bad light, y'all. But <clears throat> that's all that God is trying to do with our lives. And it's just so simple. And we really tend to make things complicated because we want to do what we want to do. We, we just go buy houses and we go marry people or we date people or we take jobs or we move to cities and states that God never orchestrated for our lives and then we turn around and we ask God to bless it and then when things go awry we get pissed at God that's why I say the piss we get pissed at God and then we want to turn around and spit in God's face and turn on him and we want to blame him but in actuality it's our fault because we didn't listen to God we never consulted God the Bible says, the Word of God says that <clears throat> we have a predestined inheritance and an, expect, an, 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 um, an expected end. He already has everything mapped out. David said, I come in the volume of the book. Your life is already written out. I heard a, um, I heard a message years ago called Seesaw. And the man that God talked about where God, where God saw you and... He wanted to, he wanted to get you to where he saw you. Because right now he sees what you're going through. He sees me to be changing your life. He sees what needs to die in you. But he needs to get you to his purpose. That's where he saw you. So, <clears throat> it's really that simple, guys. We make everything so simple. We think that we do the whole ratasha, ikata, ba, 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 and run around seven times and we got out of our bend back with stuff. Not gonna do anything for you. It's getting real dark, yeah. I, I it just started raining out the blue. <laughs> but um that's not gonna change anything. That's not gonna make a difference. Now it's nothing wrong with praising God and worshiping God because we're supposed to his word says God inhabits the praise of his people. However, if you think that just yelling and screaming at God, hallelujah, and making absolutely no change in your spiritual walk with him if you think that that's gonna get you what you need in life then you're gonna be in for a rude awakening your marriages are gonna fail your life all around is just gonna fail and 
it's going to remain in a state of failure until, I did not know it can get dark with me like this, y'all, but you will remain in a state of failure until you surrender yourself to God. And surrender is, is, is not easy, especially if you went 15, 20 years doing whatever you wanted to do. So you got this mindset. You have this ideology that you believe in, this doctrine that you believe in. And that's what hinders us from surrendering our will to God. So all I'm trying to say is if you find yourself in a place where things just aren't working, that is a clear sign that you need to stop everything and do what Psalm 46 and 10 says. Be still and, and know that he is God. Be still know that God is God. Stop. And first of all, repent for being disobedient. Repent for walking away from God. Repent for doing what you wanted to do. Then if I were you, this is what I do. I repent. I say the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> that is the beginning. That is, that, is, that is the very beginning of where you should start. Say the Lord's Prayer. Then thank God for who He is. Praise Him. Worship Him. Next prayer point. Thank God for what He's done for you. Thank God for what He's doing and what He is going to do. Thank God for His promises. And then... Thank God for his perfect will. Surrender. Yield to his will. If he tell you to go, go. If he say it, submit to it. Yield and bow down to God's perfect will. Surrender. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to minister to you, to teach you how to surrender to God. And then lastly, if you don't know how to pray in the Spirit, the Word says you can moan and groan. And let the Spirit of God, let the Holy Spirit intercede for you. And I guarantee you, you remain consistent with those simple steps. You will start to see a change in your life. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to happen right after you finish praying. But as you remain consistent, you will start to notice a difference in the way you view things. Your perspective is going to change. Your focus is going to change. Your focus would just be on God and God alone, not whatever you got going on, not your problems. Because a lot of times our problems become an eclipse to God when God is supposed to eclipse all of our problems and whatever we have going on. Because we're supposed to trust God, that God you know, has a plan for our lives. So I encourage everyone to just surrender your will to God. And when you pray God's will, his word says that he will hear your prayer. And when you pray God's will, he has to respond by his own spiritual law. So get ready for his response. Make sure your heart has the right posture. That's why I said in the beginning, you repent. You thank God and give reverence for who he is. Approach God with the right heart posture. Because if you go in prideful and you don't approach God, approach the throne the right way, God is not going to hear you. He ain't even going to bat an eyebrow at you. He ain't going to turn around. So you have to have the right heart posture. So guys, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I usually don't ask people to do that, but of course it helps the, al the algorithm out. So if this video blessed you, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, by the way, my name is Israel. I always forget to introduce myself. I just like want to go right to the material. But my name is Israel, and I created Kingdom Concept for you and myself, so we can break down the religious, the re uh, religious ideologies of living and not really understanding God's practical principles. I want everybody to have a better quality of life. The only way we can do that is if we understand God's precept and understand God's actual concept. So guys, I see you in the next one.